Hello there assassins, welcome back to another Wheel Assassin guide. This is part number 6 in how to build the Phantom Manor ride in Minecraft. Now I would normally fly up and kind of, you know, as we say, the ride in Minecraft, we normally fly up and give you kind of a, a grand look and whatnot. But I've actually finished the plan now and I don't want to spoil anything because I'm going to be releasing a tour video very very soon to kind of show you around the entire ride. So uh, for those of you that have never been on the ride, it'll be a nice surprise for you. So I'm not going to spoil it in today's episode. But this is part number six, where we'll be building this uh, self-playing piano over here. Um, and the kind of knocking doors. So as you go along here on the track, each and every door kind of knocks on its own. And then of course we have the very notorious and uh, famous um, grandfather clock that Phantom Manor does have as well. So, lots to do today, but it is going to be a very, very successful session because then we can move on to Madame Leota's kind of uh, table, <laughs> I guess you could say, uh, in there. And that is a very, very like big part of the ride. So it's going to be nice to get this part done to work on the next bit. Let's just get some materials and get started with part number six. So to start today's episode off, we are going to grab ourselves some crying obsidian, some purple glazed terracotta, some cobwebs, some netherite helmets, some glow item frames, warped signs and finally some red wool. Now I'm really sorry in advance guys but I may be repeating myself a few times with these materials. I'll try my best not to of course but um, I think we may have to use these materials multiple times throughout this episode. So um, if that is the case I am sorry in advance. Okay let's go ahead and firstly make the rest of this pattern. So we're going to make sure we go two blocks uh, from this point here. So we need to just be one block past this one. So with the patterned wall we'll place a, a glaze just there and then a crying obsidian. Then we'll come down here and alternate again all the way up to get to there. Then we're going to go ahead and do one here diagonally away forward. So we're going to start the pattern off with a crying until we head up to a glazed should be on. Oh no, a crying as well. My mistake, of course. <laughs> Whatever we start with, we end with as well, because this is an even number, I think. Let's just double check. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, it's not, of course. In Minecraft, we like odd numbers, and uh, apparently I don't like maths. <laughs> well, I know I don't like maths, but apparently I'm not good at it. <laughs> okay, this one is going to be needing to end on a glazed, so we'll start with a glazed. Now the reason we make this pattern is of course we're trying to make that uh, purple wallpaper that is very uh, unique to Phantom Manor um, but we also need this pattern to help us you know determine where things are going to be so it's very very useful. Now then once we have ourselves three of these we're going to make sure we have four just that when we go into the uh, corner down here it's going to be like a long stretch so we'll do another one of glazed. Oops. Uh, here, like so. Then we'll go ahead and build our glazed down here. Uh, here I might actually start with my crying. It looks like I started with my glazed on that one, but I'm not sure. I might just run across and check. So nope, that is my mistake. So we're going to go ahead and do the two up here. Then we have the one, two, and three. And then this one is going to be worth two. So we'll start with the crying and get up to a crying in a second. Like so. Then we'll come out for five blocks in a row, uh, six blocks in a row actually, starting with our glazed, going up until we reach the top here. Then we'll do crying, glazed, crying, glazed and crying. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just go ahead and build the patterns in here. We can sort of uh, go a bit quick with this part because it's quite easy to do once you have the base structure in, everything else follows very nicely. So there we go, we have our six blocks in there. Then we're going to go up for three singular ones. So we'll go down here and start with a glazed, a crying and a glazed. Then we'll go ahead and make the pattern of course, like so, until we reach our desired height which is going to be the same as our original block of course down there. Perfect, the three is there. Then we're going to make our last row of five and this is going to be going up to Madame Leota's circle. So we'll go diagonally up from this one and we'll build with our crying first, glazed crying, glazed crying, like so. Let's go ahead and build this wall in. And then once we have this done, it's time to work on the carpet. And then we move to the other side of the tracks for some very, very important details a bit later on. 
there we go awesome so then we have a big big wall in there that's great stuff okay if you want to go ahead and take yourself your bits of uh, decoration now so things like cobwebs and uh, the netherite helmet and glow item frame we're going to be using these next as well as the sign of course so we'll go down here we'll go to our second lot of crying obsidian and we'll place a item frame with a helmet then we'll go up to here and we'll place an item frame and a helmet then we'll drop onto the next one along down here on the final crying obsidian before where the path will be with a helmet then we'll go to this one just here um, this one or should we go for a different one let's go for uh, let's go for maybe this one yeah why not let's go for this one place under the right helmet just up there like so then I want to place myself a warped sign just diagonally to the left of it down here and on the sign I'm gonna write myself tomb like so and then I'm gonna space along to get down to a next row or at least close sweet oops that's seat <laughs> sweet and then tomb again now then this is a little bit difficult to get into the right you know the lines where you want it to be so you may have to just mess about with it for a little bit it's always quite awkward especially with the new minecraft signs and whatnot so let's go ahead and make that down a bit more you could always do that that would look nice or then you could do something a bit different like this and so on and so forth so it's just up to you guys how you want it to be oh gosh it's hard to uh it's hard to maneuver with these new signs there we go tomb sweet tomb just as long as you've got it written on there it'll look great nonetheless okay cool so if you want to now go ahead and use your red wall we can fill up to that sign in the floor here with our red wall so to here like so perfect then we'll go onwards from the sign and we'll go around the corner a bit over here this is where our first door is going to be for now though we're going to place ourselves a glow item frame here with another right helmet and then one over here on this crying obsidian second one down on the left side then we'll go right the way over here and we'll go back into this corner over here and our it's probably going to be our second crying obsidian just here and another right helmet then we'll do one up here as well on our glazed just about uh, trying to figure this out this might this might go around the corner just here for one there and then we'll finally place one just over here on this crying obsidian then one up here and one finally down here as well all with the netherite helmets they're not necessarily needing to go in these positions but I think it's helpful to put them in the same ones as me just as a reference so that when you build your clock and whatnot you know exactly where it's going to be placed now let's backtrack with our cobwebs cobweb here here two just here one below this item frame around the corner two next to this item frame around the corner then we'll go around a corner again <laughs> back to this doorway and whatnot one above the item frame one just here and then one just next to the item frame to the left then backtracking again we'll place two with one up here we'll place one down and up, uh, down above this one hmm I might place firstly two just here, one here and one here, and then maybe come back to one being placed around this position. Why not? Just about there. Now then, that looks good. And then we'll go from there. For now, just keeping it like that. Yeah, I think that actually looks really good. Brilliant. Okay, I think we should go ahead and use the rest of our red wall. Uh, I just want to go and check things and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to use our red wall into this gap here. All the way around here to two blocks here on the end upwards to our patterned wall and then we'll go two blocks in diagonally we'll leave this block off and then we'll fill in the rest of this grass with two layers of red wall you guys got this let's get it done and we'll be right back so then next let's go ahead and finish up this side of our um our kind of track and everything so let's go down to this corner up here and we want to come to these blocks just here so this is going to be kind of right next to and in line with this item frame just here. So let's go up this way, this way, placing two blocks of red and then filling it up. Remember, these are always going to be two blocks high because the track is two blocks high currently. It's going to be three blocks probably when we get over there. 
let's go ahead and build two and then we'll go to this we'll build up here so it's in line then we'll go diagonally up again diagonally up again diagonally up again and then what we're going to do is as we get down to this area over here we're going to build the two just there in line with the track and then we want to go past it for about three like so now then every single block in here needs to be filled up like that and then the final one here the final corner of this three that we added in goes into a four long row here to connect to the track hopefully that makes sense but i'll fly up here just so you can see what i've done just in case now we're going to fill in these ones like so and i'm actually going to fill in this one here so it's worth three this one here to three and this one here to three like so then i have myself a gap of um oops hold on a second i think i need to go and change the track i'll be right back so after a slight bit of confusion i think i figured it out you're just going to need to grab yourself some chiseled nether bro uh, bricks even and uh, down here on this corner what i ended up doing is because i wanted to make this into a circle which of course we have here already uh, we just need to go ahead and change it so that we have a bit more track on this side well a bit more pathway on this side so we'll knock out these three blocks and we'll place them with red then we'll go ahead and add a block in here and a block in here like so so now we have ourselves one two three four five six seven and then a five row down here and then over here we should have three and on this side as well three that is perfect phew okay i didn't do anything too major <laughs> too major wrong that's all good so back to business down here add in two blocks of red and then another two uh, blocks even just here like so so let's get back to business and continue our uh, walls and everything like that so back to business with a track down here let's go into the little gap just here and let's start with some crying obsidian then we'll go for the, the whole pattern all the way up until we reach ourselves the same height as this one over here which is going to end on a crying obsidian so in total you need one two three four five crying obsidians alternated between some glazed terracotta awesome purple glazed of course so back here let's go ahead and start with our purple for two rows this time i know it's going to be a bit annoying for the pattern but you only get to see one wall anyways and then the other one is going to be covered up with some uh, black concrete i think just later on there we go then we'll do another one uh starting with crying obsidian like so and then we'll do two again but this time we'll alternate so we'll start with a crying just sorry a, a, uh, <laughs> a purple glazed and then a crying just here so let's go ahead and build these up you know i had to change the render distance on my uh uh on my plan version of this and um loads of graphical settings because it was lagging out quite a bit because it's so so big and uh once everything is in here it's going to look massive um yeah you'll you'll see why but i did have to change my graphics a little bit because it was lagging out and i only play on console edition so you can imagine how drastic that must have been <laughs> so let's go ahead and change our red wall down here by building it along just past the track there then we build down into this little cubby hole and complete it just there now we're going to backtrack a little bit and we're going to go ahead and build just singular ones all the way up until we reach uh the two down here like so then of course that goes back into its own thing and we don't have to worry about it next we're going to come to this gap down here and we're going to miss this one out we're going to go direct uh, diagonally around the corner we'll build two blocks up as if we're on track level and then we want to build nine blocks up one two three four five six seven eight nine with our red wall we'll go ahead and build six blocks from the top down one two three four five six oops six coming out forward that is from that pillar then around the corner here on the nine drop down from the top for three like so oh sorry on the six one oops one two three like so my mistake i did look at that very very wrong there we go yeah that looks great okay we're sticking to the whole diagonal pattern so it's a little bit awkward sometimes to uh, read a picture so next we'll go to this corner over here where we ended with our red carpet a second ago and we'll go ahead and build this one up next so we'll build this one up to the floor level then we'll build our nine one two three four five six seven eight nine 
we'll do ourselves the six coming out of the front. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the three out the back. One, two, three. Nope. Three out the front of the six. There we go. Well, technically out the back for this one. God, my mistake. There we go. I hope that is, uh, I hope that is simple enough once I stop messing up. <laughs> there we are. Awesome. Okay, the next thing to do is to come behind these. So, behind the nine. That is definitely right this time. And we're going to leave a block and we'll go to this one just here. Now, on this one, I'm going to start with myself uh, just two random blocks. I may start with my crying obsidian. Then I'll go for some purple glazed, for, for example. And then now at floor level, I'm going to start with five blocks in total. I need to get up to crying obsidian. So this could end up being a double pattern at the bottom. Who knows? Let's go for a trial and error. One, two, three, four, five. No, perfect. Okay. So three crying obsidians to make us five blocks above floor level. Okay, perfect. Now the other side, again, a block behind it, just this way. So it's in line with this wall over here. We're going to start with a crying obsidian again, and we'll go ahead and build upwards until we have five blocks above, above, above floor level even. I can't speak. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. There we go. That is looking good. Okay, I think we're about ready to get some new materials. Let's go for it. Okay, before we do move on to those new materials, let's just go over to this wall over here. And as it's the same design as this one, we of course need to add in the features. So let's go ahead and add in ourselves two cobwebs, one block down from the top. One, two. A glow item frame just here with a helmet in. And then another one just here with a helmet in. And another one on this uh, glazed with a helmet in, of course, just like so. Then we'll do ourselves a couple dotted around cobwebs, so we'll do one just next to this item frame here, and then one just up here, the block back, like so. Awesome. Now down here, and uh, diagonally down from the uh, cobweb, we'll do another item frame with a never right helmet in, like so. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. There we go, looking good. So next we're going to take ourselves some stripped dark oak wood, some spruce signs, some spruce uh, wood planks, spruce buttons, oak wood, spruce wood stairs, soul sand, and a wither skeleton skull. I just realized how many Minecraft materials start with S. Was that done on purpose to catch me out of my lisp? <laughs> Who knows? It's annoying nonetheless. <laughs> Only kidding. Let's go ahead and use our stripped dark oak wood first. Let's go from the bottom up here and we'll build up so we're two blocks below this wall. So basically, we're going to be in line just before that cobweb. So let's go, oops, two, and then we've got the third one, three, four, five, six blocks just here. Then we're going to leave a two block space and we're going to build three, and then we're going to go up to six as well, like so. Then we'll leave another two block space and we'll go to one and build to six, like so. Cool. Now we're going to go ahead and take our spruce with planks and we'll build in here up to the floor level. And then we're going to build three layers past it, like so. Then the last layer can be oak wood. And then the final layer after that can be stripped dark oak again, like so. Brilliant. Now let's take ourselves some spruce wood si uh, si uh, <laughs> stairs. I really wanted to say uh, signs then, didn't I? So let's go ahead and stick one here and here, so they're back to back. Here and here. And then we can stick one in the corner down here, which is a little bit awkward because of this cobweb. So I'm just going to move it along just a second, like so. So I'm going to stick one just there and then one here, one here and one in this corner as well. Oh, nope, not quite, not quite, come on. There we go, like so. Then finally you can stick upside down ones here and here, here and here, and then also here, here, here and here, like so. Let's stick ourselves some buttons up the top and at the bottom. And then the, the rest is gonna be with signs. So just two signs blank in the center of those doors. They kind of represent the knocking of the doors, uh, which is going to be good. And then over here, we'll build another door, 
which is also going to be the same design. Uh, yep, pretty much the same design, just of course in the different wall. So we'll come down from this cobweb and we'll build one, two, three, four with our dark oak. And then we'll go over here and do the same. One, two, three, four. That's two blocks away. And then up here we'll build two. And then we'll go down again, building in our oak wood. And then we have three layers of spruce ready to go in here. Like so. We'll do our stairs first. Like this. Upside down under each of the arches. And then an inside arch like so. Then we do buttons at the top and bottom and then blank signs in the center, like so. Awesome. Now then, back to this one. We need to go ahead and fill up the rest of the wall with soul sand. So two layers of soul sand, like so. And then finally, use yourself some wither skeleton skulls and build along each of the uh, soul sand blocks to have yourself a wall of skulls, which looks really, really creepy. Perfect for what we're trying to build. Great. And as we have these materials, by the way, you can then go ahead and use yourself some stripped dark oak wood. You can go from the ground up from this little gap in here. I'm going to build three blocks past the soul sand. One, two, three. And that'll be also a block past this uh, this red. Then we'll go down here on, on top of this one. We're going to build four blocks up. One, two, three, four. That'll be a block down, but don't worry about that. Then we'll build a block in here, just the one. Then we're going to build this one going back and then we'll go straight from the ground up like so it's important we just build the one in there and not fill it up from the ground up does that make sense i hope so because uh we need to leave this one exposed on the inside so that you can actually you know see it and it's visible to uh to everyone that looks good okay i'm just gonna check the inside of this making sure everything is looking pretty good but yeah that's looking good so far so now then onto the other side we come around here and we want to go ahead and build ourselves one, two, three, four blocks up, one block back here, and then from the ground up, just here next to that singular one. Then we can also build ourselves another, I think we can do another beam just here, but I would like to go and check before we do so. Let's not do that for a second. Let's go from this one instead, and in this space here, between our normal wall and our red wall, we'll build from the ground up, and we'll go in line with our red just here, like so. Now then, on this one, I'm going to stick a temporary block. And I'm going to build four for one block and knock that one off. Then I can start to build the uh, the inside area just in here. So if we look on the inside, we should have a similar shape on both sides, which we look in pretty accurate. Good stuff. It's not going to be the exact same because we have this curve, of course, and it's a little bit different. Uh, on the left side than it is the right, but that's not a problem. It should be, should be, you know, okay. So <laughs> let's continue and then hope for the best. So then on the inside over here, we have ourselves three explosive box, blocks even from the top of this wall. Then we have the singular one. We'll do another one just here now. Then it's going to be filled up with glass for the rest of it. Now then on the other side, we'll do the same sort of thing. So we have ourselves uh, okay, I might just knock off a couple blocks in here just to make it look fine, which I'm going to do now. So I'm going to knock off one, two, then I'm going to knock off this wall just there like so. That is fine. Then I'm going to go up here, and as we have ourselves this one, we need to add in another one just here, and that will represent where the glass is going to be for that back window. But yeah, the rest of it is looking ready to go. That's good. Okay. So, let's go ahead and take ourselves some stripped dark oak wood again and go one, two, three blocks from this one and one, two, three blocks from that one, just there. We'll then build this one up for about one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, like so. Then we'll go ahead and build ourselves a diagonal one. So we're going to have to go from here, then diagonally one, from here, and diagonally one here, diagonally one out, here and diagonally one out, like so. Then you can connect them behind in the middle. We also need to do a similar thing below. So we'll go from here and here, out forward, until you connect them to be the same silhouette as the top, like so. Cool, you can sort of see where the window is going to be now. Well, I hope so. 
that is the idea okay great it's not going to look the exact you know perfection as the original at the moment because we don't have any of the foliage and whatnot that we're going to make it look very very spooky with so um don't worry it's going to look very bland for now but it is looking how it should be and that's perfect so good job guys looking good so let's go ahead and take some stripped dark oak wood again some red banners some cobbled deep slate slab some polished bowl salt some warp trap doors a bell a clock a glow item frame again and some smooth bowl salt let's go ahead and use ourselves materials for our grandfather clock first so going over to this wall over here so closest to the circle we're going to go into the center block here of our five we'll place a slab firstly then we'll build ourselves two blocks of polished bell salt here in the back wall we'll stick one forward just here with an item frame on with a clock in a bell goes down here preferably stuck to the back wall and not from above because it looks a bit different from above we need to go for the one with the big sort of a stick there holding the bell then we'll take ourselves some trapdoors and we'll stick one on top and then we're going to fold one on either side of the slab and then we're going to crouch or shift click on top of those trapdoors so we fold them against the bell and then finally we can stick them from the top down of the uh, smooth bar salt block like so there you have yourself the big grandfather clock that is very well known in Phantom Manor. So for the roof of our piano area, we'll go ahead and use our dark oak wood, our stripped dark oak wood. We'll place one here and here, so it's on top of the red, leaving only a corner. Then we'll do a diagonal one here, so it's going to come out. Another diagonal one, another diagonal one, and another diagonal one to reach that red just there. Then we'll connect it with one block here and leave off this one. Then we need to go behind these twos that we have on both sides and I'm actually going to build this one into a cluster of four so we now have two then it comes out to three then we're going to start on this one back here and we're going to build one two so then we have one two three four in this row but we don't want four we want to actually go for five so we're going to start a new bit back here like so just by ending one block then we'll go ahead and build this one into a nice row just there then we'll come back in then we'll go ahead and go back in again we'll go back in again and then we'll go back in again just to this one just here so up here we have ourselves this two we want to go ahead and build it out just there which you can see where it's going to be which is nice just with those two and then we're going to go ahead and use ourselves uh, or is that it? that looks like about it <laughs> it looked like it had more to it than it is but no, that is it. I just did it a bit more messy on my original one. Perfect. Okay, good stuff, guys. So now we'll use red banners in here on basically all of the red wall that we have just here placed, which is awesome. So we can just go straight the way down. Of course, it's a little bit awkward next to the wither skeleton uh, skulls, but just go the best you can with those ones. Then here as well. Over here, pretty simple. We can just do the entire way. Oops. Oh my bad. There we go. All the way down to the floor. Oh, not in the floor though. Just <laughs> just hanging above the floor. Up to there. And then we'll go ahead and build this side as well. As long as it looks very, very grand. The Phantom Manor is a very, very grand looking place. It's just very, you know, run down, I guess. And made to look very, very creepy. Let's use some smooth uh, bar salt now. And fill in these gaps here next to the red wall. Like so. And then we're going to use this to outline the rest of our shape. So we need to go on the inside of our actual uh, piano area. So we'll go into this corner down here. We'll go along these blocks over here. We'll go over here and do the same. Here as well. Along the back here. And then I think that's about it for now. Over this way I might just add in myself another lot of two just there. Yeah, just to finish it up. But otherwise... That is looking pretty good. Okay, we may need to root, like move the roof up afterwards, but we'll leave it for now. Um, but yeah, that's looking good. Good good job, guys. That's looking really, really cool. We're going to take ourselves some stripped dark oak wood again, some warped stem, some stripped oak wood, some end stone, a chorus plant, a chorus flower, warped trapdoors, warped hyphia, hyphae, hyphia, 
either way <laughs> this thing um, some flowered azalea leaves and uh, yeah then we can get to work so we'll go ahead and first start with our stripped oak wood we'll place in it around the border of this entire area so up to this corner here leaving this one for some end stone then two blocks along again uh, then we'll do ourselves uh, can we do another one here I might actually just place this place some more basalt here in a second so we'll leave that one for a minute we'll go into this corner over here so just next to actually we're, yeah we'll place this basalt here with ourselves some warped hyphia for two blocks and then we'll actually go for a third block just here sticking uh, some flowered azalea leaves on top then we'll do the same here again like so then we'll go ahead and take ourselves two endstone blocks just in here and then we'll stick ourselves a chorus plant and a chorus flower same on this endstone now to make them not grow any further than they should stick yourself a warp trap door on top of them it also makes the effect that they're being held in a, a vase or something which is pretty cool then we want to go ahead and go into this corner over here and next to the oops let me just check this out next to next to this one over here we're going to place ourselves some more stripped oak wood and then we'll stick ourselves another end stone blocks for two but this time just a chorus flower and just a warp trap door like so uh actually no we'll do the whole thing why not yeah that, that actually looks that looks about right yeah that's cool good stuff okay and then you can complete it with some more stripped oak in that little gap then if you want to add in yourself some some more smooth basalt just pick block it to add around there it's not really the most important but if you want to do that go for it cool okay whilst we have our stripped dark oak wood on us we need to make this go up to six blocks instead of what it is now so we're going to build these up just to ground level like so then we'll do a block past ground level and then we'll start on this corner here to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll just basically mimic what we already have already. Just here. So yeah, that's looking good. Remove this one now. Then down here, we'll build this one up so it's above ground level. Just for one block, like so. Yes, that looks really good now. Awesome. Okay, great stuff, guys. Okay, I'm going to go get some new materials and I'll be right back. Now I'll take our warped stem again, I am so sorry, I did forget this one, but it actually comes in handy, like more so now, which is really lucky, so, phew. <laughs> some stripped warped stem as well, some prismarine brick slab, a conduit, dark oak wood slabs, dark oak wood signs, activator rail, dark oak trap doors, and finally some cobwebs as well. Okay, so it's time to build the piano. Let's take our warped stem first of all. Let's place two blocks in here and two blocks here. By the way, on their sides, we have this cool looking carpet just here. We'll do the entire thing just filled in with warp stem. No matter of its direction, it's all good. Over on these two, closest to this uh, chorus flower, we'll go ahead and stick ourselves two blocks made of dark oak. Then we'll do another one here, another one here, and a final one up here like so. So we have this shape just here. We'll then go ahead and put slabs on this one, building a block here and here, adding slabs on this one, this one, and this one. So we have three blocks exposed here, and then we have ourselves a space for three more blocks behind, like so. On the central one, we'll then put ourselves our book, which is going to be an enchanted table just here to make it look like the, uh, you know, the moving pages of the uh, pianist's, pianist's um, book just there, which is pretty cool. For now, they can take our activator rail, and stick it just here for a piano. I like to put it the other way around, so if we can get the tracks to be the other way, you may have to move the slab off for a second. Okay. Or just shape it. That always works. <laughs> like so. Then uh, it looks much better from, you know, as you're coming around the corner, kind of looks like the actual keys of p the piano. Pretty cool. Okay, then we take ourselves some signs and we stick them blank ones here and here, and then here, here and at the back as well for one then we'll build ourselves our seat our seat is just going to be a nice little uh, stool for our pianist to sit just about here so one slab on the floor 
and then we'll fold up the dark oak trapdoors with the uh, the chunky bits sticking out the back. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay, the next thing to do is to build a little sofa in the corner down here. We're going to take ourselves stripped warp stem and stick it on its side here, and one here as well. Then prismarine brick slabs go in the center for two, and a conduit goes on this right side, like so. Then we'll go ahead and take ourselves our cobwebs, and to make this place look even spookier, stick a cobweb above the conduit, just to block up, that's fine. Then go up to the ceiling up here, stick one in the corner up there, go diagonally forward and stick two, go up one and leave a block to stick one, go up another block and stick one just about here, go back on this one and stick one here, then go back from this one, leaving a block and stick one here, like so. Again, they don't have to be in the same exact position as my ones, but it looks pretty cool too. Finally, stick one here, and two down the side there on the left. Perfect. Let's get some more materials. Now we'll take ourselves a monster spawner, a beacon, chains, an enchanted table, soul lanterns, flowering azalea, flower pots, barriers, which I'll show you how to get in a second, and some spawn bats. <laughs> so just a bat egg, basically. Let's go ahead and take ourselves the chat window open here. Now to get your barriers, click in to write a command, go ahead and put slash, then write give directly next to the slash, do yourself an at, just here on your keyboard, oh, and it needs to be just a space away from the, the slash give by the way. You're going to write at s, which will be yourself, and that will command Minecraft to give anything you do give to yourself. Then you just want to write in barrier, a space away from the s. Now once you type this in, let me just show you, it comes with a barrier on the left side there, so you know you're typing the right thing. Click enter, and it said in, it will say in the top left corner, oh, you have given yourself one barrier. This doesn't mean just the one, it means you can spam multiple of these. And one important thing to remember is when you place it, when you're holding a barrier, you can see it. When you're not holding it, you can't see it, it's invisible, and it's you can't get past it. You can't destroy it when you're in survival. So, it is very, very useful to you know, deceive people, and so you can place things like sand floating in midair with some barriers and stuff like that. And you can also trap bats, which is what we're going to be doing in a second. For now, stick a enchanted table in the center of the piano, a soul lantern to the left, a flower pot with a flowering azalea on the right side. Then we'll go from the enchanted table up to the ceiling, just here, bringing down two chains like so, a beacon, and then a monster spawner below it. You might have to shift or crouch click to place it like so. Looking good. Now we'll go ahead and use our bat and our barrier. So for this one, we're going to take ourselves a barrier pattern, I guess you could say, by placing one here, just next to the trapdoor here, just next to the trapdoor on the front side here, one below the trapdoor, so next to the chorus flower just here, one next to this barrier just here, so that's going to be in front of the window, with one above, and then a final one here, and then another one on top of the trapdoor, just here. We need to get a bat in this little gap. So you might have to take this barrier off, place a bat, and then put it back. Oh, it's a little bit too low. We don't want to trap him too too heavily. Ah, uh, no, nah, actually, it should be okay. Okay, no, nah, I feel bad. Let's move up. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> There we go, it's a little bit fiddly, but once you get it in there, the bat will be comfortable and um, it will make it look like the raven and the crows that are looming and lurking around Phantom Manor. That's what the bats represent in this build. So there we go, we'll call him Barry, we'll call him, no, we'll call him Bruce. Bruce the bat, just chilling just there. Awesome, thanks Brucey. There isn't any other bats we've already placed, is there? No, okay, we'll have to get him a friend later on. But perfect, that is it for now, let's get some more materials. <laughs> Okay then guys, not gonna lie, it is coming to the end of the video, and usually I'd like to end it on something easy, but this is quite a hard section. So remember the pause button is always there, and you can ask me any questions you may have down in the comments below. Let's take ourselves some blue and some cyan stained glass plane, planes, panes even? Stained glass panes. Some cyan stained glass, some warped wart block, some twisting vines, a warped stem again, warped trap doors, glow light chin, or lichen and red banners again okay firstly let's do the easy part stick yourself a red banner here and here <laughs> super simple that is the red banners done 
Okay, now for the glass. Let's go ahead and place ourselves blue glass all the way up. Oops. I always forget about the barriers. All the way up here to the very top, just there. Now from the bottom up, you can do three. And then you can finish up this little track just here with your cyan, like so. Don't worry about the roof at the moment. We're going to fill that in in a second. Okay, now go to this one just here and add in some more cyan. Never exceeding this point, by the way. Don't go past this one. Then we'll go for cyan all the way along here. All the way until we reach the other side, just over here. You might be thinking, oh man, this is actually quite simple at the moment. Yeah, wait for it. <laughs> it's actually uh, it's actually been giving me some, some very big worries about trying to teach you guys this part. I'm sure it'll be okay. Right, go into that one, like so. Then we want to drop down here, and we want to build ourselves one, two, blue glass, like so. Then we'll do the rest as cyan. Like so. Then we'll do blue all the way from the blot uh, bottom, the bottom even, from to the top. And then in this space in here, the second block from the top, we'll do the blue. Just going around in a three. We'll do cyan. And then we'll go for cyan in this entire corner here for those four blocks. Then we'll do it from this one for three. Technically four panes like so, but it looks like three from the front. And then we'll connect it with a cyan just there. Then I'm going to do a random blue maybe just about here. Then I'll fill up the rest with cyan. The reason we add in the blue is just to give it a bit more detail. To make it look like there's some um, parts of glass that are sort of wavering away I guess you could say. Like so. Cool. So you can see it looks a bit, bit different than just pure cyan which is nice. And then we'll go up here and we'll add in a block here and one just here. Then we'll go ahead and kind of make sure that they're connected by twos the whole way along from those two one points like so. Then we'll go up and we'll try and squeeze out. Might have to go around because I'm a little bit too chubby. <laughs> and then we'll stick ourselves some cyan stained glass on top of this one. So from this point here and just going all the way around. On the back um, pane, gla pane glass, stained glass pane, you could not put it on this one if you didn't want to, but I'm going to just to be on the safe side. It's all going to be covered up by our warped st um, our warp block anyway, so don't worry about that. But yeah, that's looking good so far. Cool. So we're going to come three blocks out from the side of our wall just over here, and we'll do the same on the opposite side. So we'll go for one, two, three, and we'll do the same over here. So we'll go one, two, three, like so. These ones are going to go along for seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Starting counting on that one, by the way. Same on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we just go ahead and do the diagonal going back into each other. And then we're going to go ahead and build these upwards uh, so that they're actually going to be two blocks before the top. So right the way up to here, like so. And we'll do this for the entire wall all the way around. Of course, we're still going to cover up the glass, but that's for the uh, the inner section. For this outer wall, we just go for that two blocks below. So just to there. I think this is the most grindy part, I'd, I'd say. Like, when you're building all the little details, at least that gets done quite quickly. But filling up stuff takes forever. I may just speed this along. Almost there. Do I sound like a chipmunk? I hope so. <laughs> there we go. Okay, perfect. So now I have this. Let's go to the each of the ends and place a block. Then we'll go ahead and kind of surround the glass. So we'll build three. Oops, up from that one. Then two lots of four. Then we'll do three again. And then we'll do two. So here we'll do ourselves the three. The four for two. Then we'll do ourselves another three and then two. Then we need to alternate diagonal twos to get to each other, like this. Awesome. Then we can fill in these gaps, like so. We'll fill in these gaps, like so. And then we can actually smooth over this bottom part, just here. Like that, that looks really cool. Okay, now for the top part, 
it's pretty simple, but I'm just going to stick to my original one just because I don't want to make a mistake, mostly. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and build this one in here and in here. Then I'll go ahead and take myself one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, like so. This one actually looks a lot cleaner than my original one, which is nice because I really did make that one messy. But that looks good. Now, if we hop onto the inside again, you'll see it just looks very, very dark and desolate. So we're going to break in. We're going to choose a spot to break in. I'm going to break in just about here in the center. I'm going to fill up the bottom so that I'm a block before the actual, uh, you know, before the outside world and the glass with my, what is this called? The warp block. I'm forgetting Minecraft blocks. This is not good. Hopefully you guys can still see this. Just filling up the floor in here. Then I'll build myself a little tree using my warped stem. Nothing too fancy, but something that looks a bit like a tree. Like so. Maybe just come and build some more branches off of it somewhere. Stuff up from the floor and whatnot. And then I'm going to fill it up with twisting vines everywhere in here. From the floor going upwards. So literally building a ton of these. Every single spot you can find back here, build your twisting vines upwards. I'm going to skip, skip this on again just so we don't... I don't bore you. Then you can break yourself back out once you've finished, fill up that original gap, and look what you have done. That looks really good. Finally, break yourself back in to place yourself some trapdoors every now and again around in certain spots. So it doesn't have to be very, very, you know, particular, but um, we want to go ahead and stick these oh, folding up alongside the glass, just in some positions. So I'm going to do a couple in the centre here. This gets a bit awkward. Drop down an entire lot of stem there. Oh, that was my phone. <laughs> and then we'll go down here uh, to do another one just about here. And then we'll do a couple more rounds this way. If I can squeeze through, think thin. No, I can't. Okay, I'm gonna have to go up. I have to break a little bit to get around here. Honestly, it's probably best to do this from the outside before you place the stem. <laughs> I didn't really think that through, did I? But then we can just place one here and one here and then replace the stem. Now I can get around here and do a final one just next to this blue, like so. Perfect. Now let's try and get back out. Uh, fine, I'll just break out this part. Replace that glass like so, we looking good? Are we all filled up? Everything is looking good? Everything is looking good. Now I need to find my phone so I can continue the rest of the build. Okay, the last thing to do guys is just go mental with your glow lichen and place it everywhere that you can. So on the barriers you can actually place this too. So it's pretty cool, you can have some like floating glow lichen, but I recommend just putting it on the ones that are back, you know, in certain sections. Once again, I'm going to speed this on because you don't really need to see this too much. Place it on the entire ceiling. Uh, don't place it on the glass because, well, you can't anyways. Um, but don't place it on these three blocks or these four blocks here. The rest, however, go ahead and stick them on all sides of, uh, you know, anywhere. Stick them wherever you can. Some on the floor, but nowhere near the actual uh, outside of the ride. So yeah, let's get this done and I'll be right back. And well there you have it guys, that was how to build Phantom Manor part number 5 in Minecraft. Thank you so much for joining me on this really long tutorial adventure, I really hope you've had fun building. Uh, this one was very very difficult to teach you but I do hope that uh, everyone's got it down and uh, I hope it came out alright. If you do need any help though please don't forget to ask me any questions you may have down in the comments below and you can remember you know, in future episodes and whatnot, please remember the pause button is always your friend and it's always there to help us out. So please remember to use it. 
Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in part number six coming very, very soon, and you're not already, please join the Assassin of today for free by subscribing. That'd be awesome. If you did enjoy this one, please be sure to drop a like. That'd be wicked and really, really helps me out so, so much. And finally, if you're on social media, check out the links in the description to check out my social media. So that'd be awesome too. Until the next time, guys, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you at part number six coming in two weeks' time. We started the adventure once again. We're going to be getting this done all the way up to Halloween, so it's going to be really good. So let's do it. See you later, guys. Take care.